Jackie Crone, our five-year cancer survivor, has had an incredible hour-long Swedish massage and is now standing by in the chair to see what is going to happen with her hair makeover. Okay, we're with Jennifer and we're doing what you would normally do when you go to a salon, a little consultation, right? Yes. So what are we doing with Jackie's hair? Well, she's a little bit nervous because we're gonna cut some length off the back. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but she's gonna love it and she's gonna look great. She's got a lot of heaviness going on back here so I kinda wanna get rid of that and even it out with the front. And we're also gonna touch up her color. We're gonna do a lot of the same basic color that she's got going on right now but we're yeah. gonna throw in some nice summery highlights for her too. So it's, so it's like getting ready for the summer. That's right. Yeah. So take a good look folks because this person is going to disappear and she will be transformed. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> Previously, I had an opportunity to sit down with Jackie and talk with her about finding out that she had cancer. When you found out you had breast cancer, what were you thinking? Um, I, I was just thinking, well, the responsible thing to do would be to have this checked. I didn't think by any means that it was cancer. I just thought I was being a, you know, taking care of my body, doing what you're supposed to do. If you find a lump, you need to call the doctor. And um, so I did. And was there any part of you that wanted to not have it checked? No. Mm -mm. So you were, and that is something that you would tell anyone who mm -hmm. is in the same situation. Exactly. I mean, other than, you know, it's just inconvenient. You know, I had four children and like, you know, my baby was one. You know, it's just hard to find time to, you know, find a sitter for the baby, you know, go to the doctor. Other than that, that was the only thing. Just the inconvenience of it all, which I think probably holds a lot of people back from right. doing things they should. You right. know, it's just not convenient. But um, So then you go in there and you explain that you found a lump. Mm -hmm. And what was their reaction? No big deal? Um, no, uh, I mean, she, she was a wonderful doctor, you know checked me and she's like, you know what, I just, I still have some, some concerns. She goes, I'd like to, I'd like you to come back for a mammogram next week, so. So after you were asked to come back for a mammogram, what was going through your head? You know, what kind of, talk me through what the next steps were. Sure, um, I think at that point I started to go, hmm, I wonder, you know, just a, just a, just a little bit anxious, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I went in for the mammogram. And they did it, and as I was waiting for the nurse to come back, um, that's when I just really started to feel anxious. Then she came back and said, you know what, we need you to go down the hall and do an ultrasound. And that's just when I just knew. Right. So we did that, um, made an appointment for the next day to have a biopsy. I mean, things rolled as soon they as went fast. they detected. And by the second day, two days after I had had, the initial or the the mammogram um, the doctor called to give me my diagnosis and at that time was your husband there with you or was he out of town yes he was out he of was town. out of town yes, so you had yes. to go through that by yourself exactly let's see um, Tuesday for the um, after the ultrasound um, I called him he was actually in Puerto Rico so he a little ways away that's right exactly he was like I'm I'm coming home, I'm gonna catch the first plane. I'm like, no, you know, don't trouble yourself. But um, I just think, you know, he knew I needed to be there for my wife. And so. that's an important piece of, you know, everything that I watched with you, that he was really, he went through it with you. He was Every a doctor's appointment, mm -hmm. everything. And why, you know, tell me how important that is mm -hmm. to have someone, because it's really not happening to him. Exactly. It is exactly. all happening to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, physically, yeah, it was all happening to me, but I think, you know, he's like, this is my, this is my wife. This is, this is the one I love. You know, so he, he, he was just awesome. He was awesome. He looked at every all sixteen of my chemo treatments as an opportunity to have a date with me. A date. Night. So he looked at okay. it. As, you know, oh, we get to have our date today. You know, where I looked at it as chemo day, he looked at it as um, a date. And you know, I he think was that's just great. just awesome to you know, support me. You made the choice to have a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. And was that advised? Tell me about how you made that decision. Sure, um, well, again, I had a fabulous surgeon, Dr. Mao, he's now retired, but um, he was wonderful. And he, we sat down with him, he gave me my options. I could have a lumpectomy, um, which actually I had two spots in one breast. And um, so, he highly 
discourage that. He said he would be quite upset with me if I chose that option, but right. you know, ultimately it was up to me. So, um, or to have a single mastectomy since it was contained just to one breast, or mm -hmm. to go ahead and have the double mastectomy. And that's what I chose to have for peace of mind and, you know, assorted other reasons. Um, you just wanted it out. I did, mm -hmm. yeah. More of Jackie's incredible fight with cancer and how her makeover is going and the big reveal for her family when we come back on Need Inspiration. Um, a couple more things, your kids. Mm -hmm. um, advice on how to communicate to your kids because they were young. I mean, youngest was one, oldest was... Nine. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so young. Young mm -hmm. enough to not understand mortality. Yeah, yeah. Especially mom's mortality. Exactly. So how did you approach that mm -hmm. as you were sick and there were times you were gone and hair loss and all mm -hmm. of that stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say that was my hardest thing to wrestle with. Um, I can imagine. Because I, I knew that I would be okay. Um, uh, my faith gave me that assurance that, you know, it's going to be okay. It was my kids that that broke my heart. I didn't want them to be without a mom. This was before I had surgery. Sure. I knew where this, the cancer was staged. Um, but again, I just, um, I remember it was right before Thanksgiving and um, our doctor said, you know what, you need to go home and be with family. I'm from Illinois. And it was, that was just a gift because I went home and I saw, oh, my kids, they will be taken care of. You know, if something happens to mom, They've got this huge support circle of grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, my husband, you know, they're gonna be loved. And and not only my family, but just um, friends. And and that was probably great for my kids. People just stepped in, you know, offered to take them to, you know, the science center or to movies, just. Or running them around Exactly, or baking cookies with them, doing all these fun things, so. I would say that that was, would be a reassurance anyone should have. That yes. they really should think about it. What would happen if I wasn't here? Yeah, and, yeah. And face it. And exactly. I'm hearing you say that over and over in different ways that it's important to face whatever the situation is. Don't avoid the thoughts. Right. Because right. when you go and explore it, it may actually be better than you realize. Exactly. That's Instead right. Instead of the That's unthinkable. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What advice would you give people who are in, in a situation where um, they're not sure what to do next? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would tell them to reach out to a friend. Um, um, reach out to somebody who, who really cares for them and will stand by them. I, um, and just, like you said, be your own advocate, you know? If you, are, if you think something might be wrong, hey, you know what, it's worth a copay to go find out. Right. You know, just for peace of mind and, and early detection. That's why I'm here today right. because I if you had waited, right away. Yeah. I mean, who knows if you had waited for a month, what would have happened? Yeah. It really was about. It was pretty aggressive, my yeah. cancer. So. Thank you for sharing your story, first mm -hmm. of all. And I know it can't be fun to relive something that you sort of wish hadn't happened. <laughs> but, um, but I really, you know, obviously it touches me um, personally, and I know it will people who are watching. And I'm just so proud of you, the way that you handled everything with such grace, and you just look beautiful. So well, thank you, Liz. I'm glad that it turned out the way it did. Yes, yeah, I am too. I am too. Now let's take a look at my beautiful friend, Jackie. From the looks on her family's face, I think we did pretty well. I am at the John Stoddard Cancer Center and I am sitting with Edra Fouts. She is a cancer care coordinator. That's yes, right? That's correct. And I got her name actually from Jackie Crone, who's our survivor that got a makeover today. And she had really fond memories of you at the time when she was going through her ordeal. And both of you feel very strongly about advocating for yourself because you cut, when, when that sort of situation happens where you find out that you might have cancer or you actually have breast cancer, you're in a place where, um, you know, it's your body. It's That's happening correct. to you. That's so uh, what would your advice to them be? The woman nowadays really has the benefit of being able to make an educated decision about what she wants to do for her body. So you're not going in and just saying, tell me what to do. That's right. This is a situation where you say, 
tell me what the options are exactly. and what the risks are and the benefits, but ultimately, mm -hmm. if, if it's happening to you, you're the client. That's right, that's right. And I do sense sometimes women say, it would be easier if you just told me what to hey, do. Hey, we're a nation of people pleasers. Yes. So I kind of understand how you're in duress, mm -hmm. you can't believe this is happening to you, and mm -hmm. now suddenly you're supposed to you know, do what you want to do. So I kind of understand that. And plus the shock of just hearing the diagnosis. The capture of information is so important, but difficult because the anxiety level is so high. And um, basically through being a, a breast cancer care coordinator is to advocate for the patient, help interpret that information. The surgeons do the very best they possibly can, but she'll walk away and she'll say, you know, I only heard 50% <laughs> of that. Now right. tell me what They're they just said. They're technical too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So to be educated and to do the research and ask the questions prior to going in to the surgeon, ask, have a list of questions for the medical oncologist and a list of questions for radiation oncology. Well, Edra, thank you so much for well, you. sharing. Do you have anything else that you want to tell us? Yes, I want okay. to say do your exams, get your annual mammograms beginning a baseline at 35 and yearly after 40 and be timely with your mammograms. Don't let them lapse a year and a half to two years. Even though it really doesn't feel good, it's important. That's exactly right and be, be your own advocate. If something doesn't feel right, you need to report it and you need to find somebody that will listen to you and act upon that. Okay. Well, Edra couldn't have said it any better, so I have nothing to sum up today. Advocacy is the most important thing, and you've got to take care of your body. I hope we get, gave you some great things to think about today. Take care of yourself, and thank you so much for watching Need Inspiration. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Need Inspiration. We're proud to bring a new episode each and every week. Stop into Des Moines Motors and see our incredible line of noble cars, electric motor vehicles, and quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. We'll see you on the next episode of Need Inspiration.